I don't understand the Nightmare Court. How do you choose to turn away from Ventari? As part of who we are. It's not as simple as turning over a rock. The path to Nightmare is long and arduous. This cannot be! I will help you, Kate said. Such sweet words, Fowlane whispered, kneeling on the other side of the man. Hope is like oil on the fires of misery. Is my skin peeled off? The man groaned. Is it? Yes, Kate said gently. Fowlane laughed. Ah, <laughs> you're cruel. They came from underground, he muttered. They scrambled up. Roaches. Black with bodies of fire. Destroyers, Fowlane said. We'll get you a chirurgeon. Chirurgeon? Fowlane gripped Kate's arm and grinned. You're doing this for me, aren't you? What? No, it's for him. He's dead already. You're only tormenting him for my sake. No, I'm not. Fowlane's eyes blazed. You want me to feel for him. You want me to feel empathy. No, Kate said. I mean, yes. Of course. Help me, the man sputtered, his lip splitting. I will, Kate said. Fowlane's eyes slid closed, and her jaw clenched. You can't win me back. I'm not trying to win you back. Come with me, Kate. Join the Nightmare Court. I'm saving him, Kate yelled, reaching beneath the blackened figure and hoisting him from the floor. Kate strode toward the barn doors. But Fowlane rose in her path and set her hand on Kate's chest. The touch of her palm blazed like fire. Then a different sort of heat bloomed across Kate's chest. She pulled back to see the farmer's throat fountaining, severed by Fowlane's dagger. What? Kate cried, staggering back and falling to her knees. You killed him? I released him. Come with me. I will never turn to nightmare. Fowlane's eyes flashed. My touch and the sacrifice of this man have awakened darkness in you. She turned away. You will be mine again. Soon. So, I was talking to the king the other day. Really? So was I. How privileged we are. Look at them down there, scurrying, scavenging. Makes my heart swell with pride. Try to look more aloof. Your displays of sentiment are undignified. Today is simply beastly. Could be worse. We could be scavenging in the trash heap all day. Indeed. Status has its privileges. Your regalia requires more ornamentation. Really? How many pieces of flesh should I have? You can never wear too much ornamentation. Ooh, deja vu. Doesn't this feel quite weird? We're starting this episode exactly where we did last episode. But believe me, much progress has been made, of course, as we should all know. We're here, guys, ready to conclude this storyline with the script, where we've learned a lot about these cool little creatures and also what threatens them, which seems to be, more than any other of the Elder Dragon, Primordus with his destroyers. Now, there's a little bit of a mystery in progress right now in that these destroyers seem to have destroyer eggs which is very very strange and uh, we've taken as many precautions as possible to try and deal with the threat which includes finding and gathering a bunch of other scripts thus making the hive mind more intelligent and also uh, stealing a big ass bomb from the centaurs of the area 
so that uh, we can sort of blow whatever comes at us back to hell. Which is kind of funny because an explosion you'd think is fiery and wouldn't really hurt the fiery demons too much. But, I mean, well, I shouldn't use the word demon. Demon's a very specific thing in Guild Wars lore and it doesn't really apply to Elder Dragon minions. Um, but I did hear this thing, though, that really when with grenades and stuff, it's more the shrapnel that hurts and wounds and kills rather than the fire aspect of them. And it's just like a, a deliberately incendiary-based uh, arm. But anyway, all right, here we go. So set to blow. Let's do it. When Primordas rose beneath the earth, driving the Asura to the surface, the Skrit also fled to the lands above. Unfortunately, they were not as successful as the Asura in doing so. Packets of Skrit, or individuals, separated from the body of the fleeing group would too easily lose their way or make poor decisions, ending in their destruction by Primordus's destroyers. Therefore, fewer Skrit survived to colonize closer to the surface, for a while, the Asura believed their ancient annoyance had been destroyed, a single bright spot in the rise of the Elder Dragons. However, within a few generations, they discovered instead packets of Skrit resettling throughout Tyria. Siren, let's see what we can find out about these Skrit while we're dealing with it. Wow, what a weird intro to the zone there. We teleport on top of the gate. There is actually a funny thing I discovered on a stream recently, which is that if you die in this mission, the respawn point puts you like inside this gate. So you do have to be a little bit cautious and uh, careful with that. Uh, but yeah, so we're now in the instance and let's see what we've got. Siren? I'm worried. All this tension in the air. Something terrible is going to happen. Stay close. Welcome. Oh, wow, she she feels it too. Uh, she says welcome. That's kind of cool because we did just meet her. So welcome makes sense. Also makes me think a little bit of a shopkeeper though. So huh, I don't know. Uh, this will be quite a volatile mix, she says. And I'm not just talking about bomb powder. Skrit, destroyers, and us all under one cavern roof. Explosive. How's the plan coming along? She says it's in progress. We've gathered the explosive powder and enough script to make sure that they have the mental acuity to build the bomb. Uh, it's just a matter of time. What if the destroyers attack before the bomb's ready, we ask? Well, then we get creative. Good thing that's our specialty, right? Is it our specialty, Siren? I think your specialty is running off ahead and getting yourself in serious danger without realizing that not everything is an adventure. This scratch and all this script in it won't survive an all-out attack by the Destroyer Queen. We still need them as allies. But what do we do exactly? I don't know, but that bomb has... Oh, my phone just went off, which is weird because it's super early in the morning right now. Uh, I don't know, she says, but that bomb has to go off and close enough to the queen to take her out. If all goes well, that happens in their nest. If not, well, it still needs to happen. All right, let's hope it all goes well. Hello, script. Welcome back. The Dog Jack is anxious to see you. Ooh, is he now? Thank you very much. Uh, do you say anything else? Yes. Hi, uh, hi to you too. I, I kind of, you know, the adorable races always sit very well with me or very poorly with me. But I gotta say, I quite do enjoy the script. Uh, the more time I spend with them, the more I kind of quite like them. I guess it depends what story they're seated in. Hey, Yikatook. Something. Oh no, I haven't got something. I know you're always looking to barter. I want those destroyers gone. Almost getting killed once enough was enough for me. I'm not going foraging again until I'm sure it's safe. Wow, he seems to see. Look at how well spoken he is here. Stick close. It will be safe once we kill the Destroyer Queen. So, you guys will have seen at the start of the episode, I put some ambient dialogue in there. Uh, that's actually not of this scratch. That's of Skritzberg, the huge, you know, con congregation of Skrit, where they start having kings and queens and stuff, and they really start, start speaking very high culture. I think it's amazing. Um, I don't think these guys are quite there, but he's speaking extremely articulate. Hey, Vrakken. Different. Uh, I wonder what a Silvari does smell like. Probably really nice, right? All planty. You'd, you'd want a Silvari in your house to purify the air. Uh, we'll take a long time to catch up to our foraging after this. Even if the Destroyer Queen dies, we're all gonna get a bit thinner. Uh, better hungry in the short term than dead forever, we say. What, what, what? Uh, nothing, don't worry. That I really like the sound of that noise. I don't, I don't know what that is, guys. Oh, it tingles in my ears just right. Uh, we got a gear lobber over here. Um, who won't say anything to us? That was Siren. Uh, a sentry. Looks like these guys are just getting ready for defense. Uh, and then we got Bator. 
get ready to see my masterpiece. They'll be chittering about this bomb for generations to come. Oh, I'm e ready, eager, in fact. I mean, they hint at something here you can guys can really tell. The, the square are fascinating. They rival the Asura in intellectual capabilities once they come together. There have been some cool fan fiction and theories in the past about Guild Wars, which is the idea that you could get lots of script together and they could build, like, really profound, ridiculous technology that no one except their scratch understands at that point because it's just so complicated and ridiculous that not even the Asura get it. And they can unlock all the secrets to the universe. And just knowing that that's a potential must uh, annoy the Asura no end. This is cool. they got little holes that they climb in and out of. Look at that. That's actually awesome. Uh, then we get Chikik, uh, who says, I'm not getting awakened. I'm sitting still. Give me a goal in this location and let me get to work. You'll get your chance, I promise you that. I love it, we get to just speak to them like they're normal here. And finally, for Top Jack. Hey, I know we took our time, but we're ready. Ah, I am glad to see you. The raid on the centaur camp was a windfall of explosive powder, and the kin you rescued helped us assemble a potent bomb. For Top Jack, you sound smarter than before. What happened? We squit grow smarter when we are together. <laughs> That's why it was vital for Shikik scouts to be rescued. The greater the numbers, the better the results. For Doc Jack, our scouts are under attack. The Queen is approaching! What? No, no, too soon. The bomb isn't primed. We'll have to set it off here, in the village. Evacuate the young and the old. Oh, no. For Doc Jack, you have to ready the bomb. We'll defend you. Send as many of your people to safety as you can. Thank you. This is for the brothers and sisters they took from us. We will bury these destroyers today, no matter the cost. Almost on us. What do we do? Get as many of us out as you can, then hold back the destroyers. I will die to keep them away from you if I have to. Work quickly. Join me, creation. You, you made me mad. Well... Oh my god, we're getting hit pretty hard already. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, the attack is coming already. You know, Siren just speculated they had a queen before. We still don't know 100% if they actually do. Oh, you hear the noise. That was so cool. Uh, so it's still just speculation, but uh, we will see. No, that crabling is chasing Bator over there. Get back over here. I love the way they talk about evacuating the young and the old, you know? Like... This isn't some small mindless rabble anymore. They, they know how to prioritize which lives they care the most about. I love the thought of old script. Sadly, we don't actually get to meet any in the game. Uh, in fact, the game in general, aside from one race, and I'd say that that's the Norn, and to a slightly lesser extent, the Char, you really don't see many old characters in Guild Wars. And I kind of really get upset by that. There are some random old human NPCs you find around, but no one ever really takes truly prominent positions. Unless, like, their age is, is kind of there to support them as, like, wizened or magically proficient or something. So, I don't know. I'd like to see, like, old Skrit and old, you know, what does an old Quaggan look like, you know? I think that stuff is all, is all pretty interesting. And pretty interesting as well for, like, even major characters. Can you imagine that? Um, the Norn especially are really interesting with their age because they can live super, super, super long. Of all the races, I think the Norn can live the longest. Uh, which is kind of fascinating. So yeah, anyway, we've got to keep defending from these destroyers. Uh, some of the script can go down here, and when they do, they're like perma-dead. Other ones you can revive. So you want to keep your eye out on that. Hopefully, Siren can help to support and bring many of them back. So we've got to be careful about people going down, basically, and watch out for Siren. Let's do this then, she says over there. Yeah, don't worry. Luckily, we're cleaving stuff down. We have so much synergy in our traits and stuff now that everything's kind of easy. Anyway, here we go. Here's the queen. The bomb is ready. Stun the queen. I'll activate the bomb. And speaking of synergy, look at how much damage we're doing there. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and so you notice about this queen, it's actually a legendary mob. It's very rare to fight legendary mobs. That is outside of dungeons. And here is one. But, I mean, we are just so devastating and strong with our minions. You can see we're cleaving through it. Here they are. Let the destroyers be destroyed. Without even using any of our skills. 
I mean, how cool is that? So yeah, there you go. Once you get the queen weakened, she, she won't ever actually die. And now if you listen to the background, there's a ticking sound. That is the bomb. It's about to go off. So I want to raise this script. I'm actually really scared right now. The bomb will go off and kill us. We need to flee. We're like right now. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Swiftness. Go, 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 go. The minions can stay, but that's fine. We need to leave. Head to the front of the cave to escape the blast. I only ever got... Oh my God. Okay, it blew up. We're okay. Woo. I didn't know what the range on the blast would be there. And uh, there, if you look back, the queen has been fried and she's now uh, on her back and destroyed. Woo! Oh my lord. Anyway, we're supposed to flee to the entrance. I actually went the wrong way a little bit here and broke our immersion just a teeny weeny little bit. Uh, because I don't think we're supposed to look back at the state of the cavern after the bomb has, has exploded. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted to rest the script though. Uh, so there you have it. Let's see what, what the aftermath of that is, shall we? My people... My friends, all dead. Once was chatter and happy stories. Now, just silence. Too much silence. I'm sorry for talk, Jack. Your people were brave. They died protecting their friends and family. At least we were able to take out the queen and all her eggs. That's a victory. Not just for the script, but for all Tyria. For talk, Jack. The German Priory exists to learn about dangers like this. If you join us, you can help spare others from this fate. Destroyers hunted us below. We lost many. Ran here. Now, here they are. I see there can be no more running. My village will join your cause. These poor Skrit. I've seen other creatures die to dragon minions, but these were such friendly little fuzzballs. It's a tragedy. The script remind me of you in a way, Siren. Impulsive and reckless, but also brave. And they love life, every bit of it. A tremendous compliment, Explorer. Thank you. Come, let's report to Gix and let him know that the Priory has some new friends. I love how we just say that. We were so rude to Siren there. So rude. But because we're a Savari, we can kind of hide behind the fact that we're just naive. I'm going to get a focus here. Uh, it's just like naivety and we don't have to worry about it too much. So for talk check says, sad day, sad, but it would have been sadder without you. Thanks. We need a new place to settle and then we'll help you fight dragons like you helped us. Uh, then we still have a chance. Thank you for talk check. So at this point, the script, as you can imagine, will appear in our home instance. And that's pretty sweet. Um, but that's not necessarily in the story where I think they, they'll be at Lion's Arch as well. I think the, the, the new home might be there. I'm not actually sure entirely. I know that the Quaggan said they were going to be going to Lion's Arch. So yeah, that's the end of this story. Um, I don't know. This in some ways to me, I, I really love the script story just on paper. I think it is so, so phenomenal because really think about this. Uh, the idea of having tons of script and they become so great in numbers, you know, exponentially so, so intelligent, so wise, so close to one another. And then you have like this triple whammy of tragedy. One, they're ultra cute and they all get blown up and killed. Two, it's a ton of things getting blown up and killed and that's sad on its own. But three, you get this whole other awesome element where it's like they are robbed of everything they once were. Now that there are less of them... They are less intelligent. They they don't have what they once did in so many more ways than any of the other races. It's like when the script get destroyed by Elder Dragons, it's a much harder fool than many others. And I think that's a beautiful, tragic thing. Sadly, the instances can't really dig fully into that tragedy, obviously. Um, and I think it's a bit of shame. What you guys might not realize is this helping hands. So here we get Fatokchak's core. Fatokchak confiscated the destroyer core during his escape. Shiny. And we get given that. So that's nice. Uh, we get three instances. You know, a lot of these stories go up to like five. And later on, when we get into the main, main stuff towards the end of the game, some of these chapters are really long. They're like loads of instances. But uh, helping hands is very few. And the reason for that is, if you really take a peek behind the curtain of the way that the devs made this, is there's so many different lesser races you can choose and three orders on top of that of different choices on how you can do it. And each of them also has a branch. Here we chose the hatchery instead of seeing the bomb. There's just such a massive web of different options at this point in the game. They don't really get time to dig in on any one story, which I think is a real shame. Uh, because this is kind of a beautiful thing that they're, they're doing here with the script. Really, really, really cool. Uh, beautiful in a sad, sad way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Siren! Uh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry for talk chat. We already spoke to you. To teach. 
She says, this is a real tragedy. I'm glad we kept Fatokchak and his tribe alive and that they're ready to join us against the dragons. But to lose their home like this, it's just sad. I agree. Next time we'll have to try harder. Uh, we did lose some minions there as well. Um, but you can now see how obscenely powerful we are. And I'm very happy with that. Let's pick up a, uh, another trait while we're at it. I'm going to grab this one here. It's called Vampiric Presence. So the description of Vampiric Presence is this. It's actually a buff that appears, like Flesh of the Master for us. It's a buff that we will give out. And it says, you and your nearby allies siphon health with attacks. And that effect increases while we're in Shroud. So, let me just get, attack this stag here. And you'll see I now get the active effect while I'm in combat. And if I summon one of my minions, it shares to the minion as well. So, you might be like, okay, that sounds pretty cool, but that's familiar, isn't it? Yeah, that is, because the, one of the miners, this here, Vampiric. We just picked up Vampiric Presence, but Vampiric is also here. Vampiric, we discussed in a previous video. Siphon health whenever you hit a foe, and minions siphon health and transfer it to you. So, what's the difference between these two? Well, not much. The amount of life still you get, and the way it scales is different. And the major version will work even stronger in Shroud. But the main thing is, you can have both at once. Yeah? So, all those white numbers and everything we were looking at, we now just doubled up on that again. In fact, we have an even more potent version of it now. Um, so, yeah. And Vampiric Presence doesn't say it gives you to minions, but it does give you to nearby allies. Five of them. So, we won't give it to every single minion we have. We've only got five worth. But still, that's really good. Uh, so, just the life still keeps rolling, and we still have space for another Grand Master. Which, believe me, we'll need all of this, but we should be pretty comfortable with how strong Caraflower is. Uh, so, there you go, guys. That is the um, Lesser Races arc. It's time, you know it's coming, for the Battle of Claw Island. Let's get a move on. Squid will be good friends, huh? you'll see. Neva has offered the Priory a copy of her research. I want you to go to Lion's Arch and pick it up. The house's defense mechanisms have been activated. Oh no. Maybe someone tried to break in and steal Mava's research. Aha! Uh -huh. The creature that invaded my house was some kind of Orion scout. I told Gix that my equations predicted an assault on Lion's Arch. This intrusion implies we've reached time critical for that attack. The Claw Island Fortress stands in the harbor of Lion's Arch. It's the last defense against invasion from the sea. The creature we found hadn't been in Lion's Arch long. We may still have time. I smell something odd. Do you smell it? Smell? No. <laughs> but the back of my neck keeps itching for some reason. I don't like this. Something's definitely wrong. Is that Traherne up there talking to Commander Talon? What do you think he wants? Traherne, the necromancer? He comes through here every few months on his way to Orr. That guy creeps me out. I've researched the situation extensively. The Orions will strike here, on Plor Island. Trahan, it's been a long time. You study Orr. Have there been any signs of an attack on its way? Valiant! Yes, Claw Island is in great danger. Thank the Mother Tree that you're here as well. Firstborn, it is an honor to see you again. I'm so glad you're here. A fleet of dead ships has launched from the Straits of Devastation. The risen sail beneath a cloak of stealth. Speak with my commanders, Drac and Mira. If you don't mind, I'll accompany you on your rounds. It's been a while since I've toured the fortress. Welcome to Beach Patrol, the most dangerous duty on Claw Island. Our last order is to light those three signal towers. We have to warn Lion's Arch if the fortress is lost. In a hundred years, they've never once been lit. We're very proud of that. 
Even with all my research, we still know so little about defeating them. Is that all they brought? There will be more, much more. Keep watching the sea. You're a scholar, not a general, firstborn. Why should we trust you? The fortress is under attack. Ready on the wall. Hostiles incoming. <laughs> Right guys, there it is, Blightgast the Plague Bringer. Mira is messed up, the dragon has landed, it is time to bail. Siren, let's get out of here. Okay, and we all know what's about to happen. If they surround the docks, they'll slaughter us, and Zaitan's forces will grow. Someone needs to hold them off and give everyone else time to escape. No. Not someone. Me. Gix always said I was an exceptional troublemaker. I've always wondered what it would be like to go to the mists. It'll be a new adventure. So much I wanted to see. Oh, that last line, it gets it. Okay, so this time. I can't let you hurt them. I won't. We're gonna pay very careful attention. Mira is in bad shape. You will have to cut a path for us. Lion Guard, follow me. Hurry, to the ship. All right, Traherne. So this time we're going to pay very careful attention. I mean, the cool thing here is Cara Flower is such a ridiculously powerful badass here. This escort of Traherne carrying Deputy Mira wrapped up like so. Look at how simple that was to talk about. Uh, should not be that challenging. There's the boat that we arrived on. That's the boat we're going to leave on. And in fact, uh, you can actually just charge through as quickly as possible. And as long as you don't get in combat, Traherne shouldn't get too distracted. We get on the boat. And very sadly, we flee Claw Island. A huge victory for Zaitan. You could hear Siren crying in the background there. Could you hear that? Alrighty then. My goodness. So, our rewards for escaping from Claw Island and getting back to the city, which is now under threat of imminent attack, is an aqua breather, which I'm actually pretty happy with. We'll grab the one with the toughness on it. We haven't had a new aqua breather for a while. Uh, where is it? 
Oh, hold on. Oh, no, that's my wardrobe. My mistake, my mistake. Those were our aqua breather skins. There we go. So we'll equip a new aqua breather. We'll put uh, one of these seals on. So seals are like upgraded like pebbles and things. Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, they give That one gave us three stats. So that's nice. We get a nice new uh, aqua breather there. But uh, yeah, Claw Island falls. And we have a hell of a lot of males to get through now, guys. And quite a decision and a choice. So... Um, we got a letter from Gix, first of all. Let's read this. He says, uh, Magister, rumors from, remember, uh, Gix got the message about the scout. We went to Claw Island, while Maver went to Gix to tell him about what's going on. So he says, rumors from Lion's Arch are running rampant. The Priory has heard of the fall of Claw Island and of your bravery there. Already, a contingent of explorers are speaking with the Commodore to ensure that citizens can evacuate. It seems we must plan for the worse. I need you to assemble with the others at the Dermond Memorial in Lion's Arch. The knowledge to defeat the Elder Dragons is out there. It must exist, and we must find it. So, serious threat on the state of Lion's Arch. Again, Guild Wars 1 players know that Lion's Arch was threatened many times. We had the flooding between the two games, and now Zaitan is perched on the precipice with a freaking dragon not very far away. So scary stuff. Gix wants to figure out how to defeat them. We did also get uh, a couple of other males, including this one here called the Call of the Wild Hunt and one from Kaith. I'll read the Kaith one soon. Uh, but here we get the Call of the Wild Hunt from Tegwin. So this is a very cool male, and this happens very rarely in the game. Uh, so if you remember Karis and Tegwin from our early stories, we allowed to go live in our home while they rested and recuperated. Well, they've just sent us a message. My friend, on behalf of Karis, thank you for all you did to help us. Our wounds are healed, and the time we spent in your garden has been among the happiest of our lives. However, this morning something wondrous occurred. Karis and I both felt the call. We have been summoned by the dream, and where it will lead, we can only guess. We must go where it guides us. Before we left, I wanted to thank you once more for your kindness. I hope that we'll meet again soon. So remember, these guys were based in our home, but also they were returning to Anwin to defend that. But check it out. They they felt the power of the call. So kind of a strange male. Not many races get a male at this juncture. But here we see a mechanic where so people go to our home instance and then they leave again as the story continues to progress. And the instance continue to update to reflect what's going on. So Karis and Tegwin, who knows where they will lead. So uh, lastly, we do have a male from Kate who mailed us just after she heard about our help with the script. But we'll read that later. For now, uh, Steward Gix wants us to assemble in Lion's Arch. And it seems like a pretty high priority. So let's uh, deal with that. Now, there's a funny thing here with the gate. Oh, no, no, it's fine. So we're going to go over here to the next story step. The Ghost Right. Uh, deeper into the story than we've ever seen for, uh, before. Had Casey made it, he would have been able to enjoy this next story. And as a follower of Balthazar, I can tell you he was missing out. So here we are. Uh, we're in Lion's Arch. It's night time. Get a look. This is old LA. Uh, we do, by the way, finally have the opportunity to pick up our last Grandmaster. Uh, I'm actually going to go back to Blood Magic and train a bit deeper to this last one and get Transfusion. Remember, this is Blood Magic, so the idea of a Grandmaster called Transfusion I really like. Uh, and this one's really fun. So check it out. Shroud Skill 4 heals... And partially revives nearby allies. As well as this, up to five nearby downed allies are teleported to us when we use Shroud Skill 4. So Shroud Skill 4, if I go into Death Shroud now, is life transfer. So we've turbocharged this one skill now. We only get access to it while we're in Shroud. But this is the one that sucks energy all around us as you can see and now what this will do is heal our minions and if we have any downstate allies they'll get revived as well so this became a healing skill this became like a skill six but in shroud now for us so that will help to keep our minions alive even longer uh so yeah all right cool uh old la at night and i think uh the city's probably uh sleeping not very easily anymore you can see all the lights are on uh, because they know that something pretty bad is going on. Rumors running rampant. Uh, what have we got? Well, Traherne, we've got some ritualists. Uh, and yeah, so it's good to see you again, Traherne. Of course, we are more than familiar with you. The pale tree guides you. And he immediately gives us uh, some sorely needed dialogue. He says, ah, Siren, I remember her awakening. 
She was such a brilliant spirit. She will be missed. I wonder how much he really cared about her because of the whole Orion Cage thing. <laughs> but, uh, damn, she'd want us to carry on, we say. This is exactly what we'll do. I mean, this is kind of one of those things they talk about. It's still quite urgent, so it's not. It's, it's like we don't really get time to grieve, you know. We've got to keep moving. And Gix himself has left the Priory to come here to LA to figure out what the hell's going on. And we're about to discover that Zaitan's already slipping Stop. some small forces through to the city as soon as he got Claw Island. Magister, is it true? Siren, sh she's really dead. It's true, Gix. I'm sorry. But at least she went out bravely. Because of her sacrifice, the survivors reached Lion's Arch. I'd always hoped Siren would learn responsibility. But not like this. She was a turnip-brained, leaf-loving hero. And she will be missed. Siren's courage provided opportunity. But your bravery led us to safety, my friend. I owe you a great debt, Magister. You may not be a member of the Priory, Traherne, but you know more about the Orians than anyone in Tyria. What do you recommend? These undead are commanded by a powerful wraith. He'll remain hidden while his minions carry out the slaughter. So, we must discover the Unseen, hmm? I believe the Priory has an artifact that will aid us. An idol of Balthazar, the human god of war, murder, etc., etc. It can transform one individual. The more you kill, the more powerful you become, until your enemy can no longer hide from you. But it is risky. I'll do it. Siren was never afraid to take risks. She gave us a chance to protect the city, and I plan to do exactly that. Jesus. Okay, so we got a plan here. Uh, it seems to be uh, a reasonable one. Hello. Pay attention, Lightbringer, and I'll elucidate the, on this idol and its properties. So, bit of trivia. If you play a very specific style of char story where your father was uh, a, a shaman, you can actually discover a little bit more about this article, uh, this idol, very, very early in the game. And it even might be hinting that one of the char player character's fathers, if you chose the right story step, might have been the guy that received this for the Priory. But yeah, it's an, it's an idol. So what is this idol? It's an idol of Balthazar. See, Casey is rolling in his grave. The human gods of blood and butt kicking. Therefore, it's imbued with, well, that sort of thing. You sound like you don't really believe in the human gods, Skix. He says to each their own, no matter what power imbues in this little trinket, its sufficiency is enough for me. So he believes in the power within the trinket, but he doesn't necessarily believe in, in the gods or their relation to it. That's interesting. Uh, how did the German Priory recover it? And we can ask. And it says it was recovered by the main warband outside the Black Citadel, right? That's your father's warband if you cho chose a specific story. Uh, we have it courtesy of Tribune Brimstone. A little bit of behind the scenes. I don't like going into this too much. But I was very close to doing that story on this series with you guys. But I think the other father storyline where your dad goes completely missing and you don't know what's going on. I think that's a more interesting mystery for the future of the game that might eventually be touched on again. So I wanted to do that. It was a very difficult choice, believe me. Um, so we say, yeah, okay, well, hold on. So Tribune Brimstone? Ritlock? Ritlock offered it? Why would Ritlock Brimstone help us? And Gick says, well, he owed me a favor. And this thing's entirely too dangerous to leave lying around. That favor he owes Gix. They've never explained. And there's quite a few mysteries with Ritlock. Like, for example, how he got Sahothin, the legendary sword of Ascalon. How did he get that? Well, maybe there's something going on with him and Gix. They've never touched on what that favor might be. I have another question. Uh, what does this idol do? It places a murderous power on you. The more you kill, the more powerful you become. Wow. I mean, that's kind of already true as a necro. You said there was a risk in using it? The power inflicts a cost on your soul. If you're not strong enough, it will consume you as well. Oh my god. I have another question. What should I expect from the Risen on the beach? They will come in waves, drawn by the battle taunts of the idol. Their leadership will hold out the longest, I suspect. The waves will get more powerful until a leader appears. You kill him and the beach will be safe. Good luck, Lightbringer. So what we're actually realizing here is several forces of Zaitan have hit the city straight away. And the Priory are dealing with some, while at this very moment, who knows, maybe the Whispers are in another area of the city, maybe the Vigil are in another, helping to defend. Uh, so we're going to use a crazy art, uh, idol and artifact for this. Great. Tran, what do you think of all this? He's still talking about Siren. Much respect to him for that. 
And we don't, I mean, I, I almost had the muscle memory there to find Siren and speak to her, but she's just not here. Oh, all right. It's just us now. The allies dwindle. Let's move on in. Uh, let's get our minions up as well, I guess. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So those are the undead. Well, here's a ring of fire that the ritualists have so cast. Many mysteries in the world. I guess we stand in the middle. Hmm. How on Tyria does this stump sorcel thing work anyway? Stand still, everyone. One wrong move and we're all shish kebabs. Stuart Gix, I don't, I don't feel so well. I told you not to move. Blast it. Well, we can manage with one less. Everyone, concentrate. Oh God, so these guys have got like a fu- Oh my God. It wasn't a doubt in my mind. Go, unleash righteous extermination. Hello. I'll stand with you. Oh, Trahan's coming with us. Check it out, guys. So look, we actually got, we sacrificed a ritualist to do this. It's unbelievable. These guys still just sort of juddering around to cast this on us. We are pretty goddamn badass now, guys. So this is a really cool instance. Look at us. We are kind of like an avatar of Balthazar, sort of now. Uh, we look like a great human warrior. Um, and we have completely got new skills. So, some mechanical stuff with this. Our uh, profession mechanics have actually been ripped. So we can no longer go into Shroud, but we get to keep our utilities. That means for one, one very specific profession in the game that we haven't met or talked about yet, this mission is actually a little bit harder. But we can, as a Necro, still summon all of our minions and gain all the new abilities. So this is going to be absolutely crazy. Let's check it out. So the autos, Balthazar's Blade... Balthazar's Fury and Balthazar's Triumph. Look at the damage on those. It's so huge. There is Balthazar's Advance where we dash forward, leaving a wall of flames behind us. And if we hit someone with it, we can use Balthazar's Faint, which lets us roll backward, leaving a wall of fire behind us. This is like a turbocharged Ellie ability, really. Next, we've got Balthazar's Judgment. We smash our foes into the ground opening them up from Balthazar's mercy. If we hit it, then we become, we can summon a fiery dragon's tooth to uh, summon down on our hapless foes. These damages, the damage on all this is so huge. We got Balthazar's breath, where we can breathe crazy fire, and Balthazar's fist, launch a gigantic fireball that explodes on impact and incinerates multiple foes, which does 4,000 damage on impact. It's, it's, it's crazy, guys. All right, so I'll show you how this looks. You know how it all is. Here's the, here's the five. Look at that. Boom. Oh, yeah, baby. I mean, we didn't crit on it, which is a real shame. We can slam him into the ground and then use Balthazar's uh, tooth on him. Here's the advance. And we can roll back. And, yeah, the advance doesn't have a cooldown. So you can, as long as you're hitting targets, you can keep just darting into Risen and then pulling back. And dart into Risen and pull back. We are, like, so obscenely strong in this. It's ridiculous. And with it, we can defend the Lion Guards uh, very, very well. You might actually recognize this area of the city as well. This is where, once upon a time, we were sneaking to beat Demi Beetlestone out. Oh, there we go. So there's the boss. It's a lich. Oh, look. Another hero come to die. It's noticed you. Good. Keep cutting the minion sound. All right, so Johan wants us to keep fighting and killing minions, and I'm pretty happy with that. So the game just throws billions of undead at you. The, the early forces to escape from Claw Island hitting LA in full force, and we with the Priory have got these kind of ridiculous artifacts to use. These artifacts presumably are being held in the special archives at the Priory, which we still haven't seen, by the way. But it's kind of a hint as to just what kind of ridiculous stuff is there. How much magic the Priory has stockpiled. So they're still coming through. Now, if we try and hit Thaddeus back there at the back of the battlefield, first we'll put ourselves into quite a lot of danger from being over there, so I don't really want to hang out near him. But he's actually uh, determined right now, which means he's uh, always going to survive and immune to damage. So we can't actually really help out too much there. The gods have abandoned you. Your courage is failing. Surrender yourself. Die. So perhaps he was a human in life. Talking about the old gods, probably the human gods, because he sees us channeling Balthazar's stuff here, or uh, so we would think. And uh, yeah, Traherne says that that's, that's good, that that means that we're getting to him. So here we have a minion of Zaitan. Is this the first one? Actually communicating, speaking on behalf of Zaitan. Corrupted but cognant. Is that a word? Once I wrote the histories of Tyria. Now I write its future in your blood. My god, they've actually cleaved through all of our minions. 
I mean, we're really, really comfortable as a Necro because we can use them as a meat shield, which is a very Guild Wars bunny thing. Uh, instead of the Risen attacking us and we keep having to roll and roll and roll like this, which we could almost do like permanently, uh, we can sort of stay back a bit and launch the giant fireball. Breathe some fire. I mean, this is cool. I, I like these, these missions where no matter how you've built your character, they just let you kind of go on a bit of a rampage and see the quantities of, of Risen that Zaitan can throw around, but you feel like a badass at the same time. You and all who stand with you, prepare to join your friends in their suffering. Okay, uh, that one finally we heard is... Oh my god, look at the A-bombs! Coming out of the mists, that looks so cool. Okay, we need to flee from these. Problem is, I can't really roll back without charging in. Oh god, they're gonna really hurt. Okay, wow. Fight, guys! Don't stop! Oh my god, they can do the big hammer attacks! This is bad. Rolling back through them all. Oh, Jesus. Hopefully they stay on the minions. I'm going to use Haunt there. We could blow our minions up, but I'm scared to destroy the meat shield preemptively. I don't really want to do that. Let's breathe fire on them all. It's kind of hard to tell how much the fire breathing does because it's adding condition damage at the same time. And I don't know how much it hits. But okay, another one. That's most of them down. Oh my god, that's got to be like one of the last waves. All who defy us will fall and be crushed by the dragon's It's words of poison. I don't know. It seems pretty convincing. All will be crushed by the dragon's power? Oh, my lords. Okay. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Is he acting on behalf directly of Zaitan right now? Or of Blightgast, the dragon we see at Claw Island, and he just came from Claw Island. So that's kind of an interesting thought. Zaitan's rise cannot be stopped. You will fall, he says, and all those who will stand with you. He's kind of an interesting lich as well, I must say, in that most uh, Risen don't sound like that when they speak. He just sounds kind of like a human. I don't know whether that's a production error or whether it's a sign that maybe he hasn't been a lich for very long and he's kind of a rookie. I mean, we're still not really in end game stuff, so I can believe that these aren't the strongest liches. They, they will be coming later. Maybe that's why he sounds more human than most entities will find and less scary. Uh, I guess it's up to you guys to decide. Oh my God, there's still so many. Uh, who went down? Gix went down. No, Gix, get up. Who knows? We could have been missing cool dialogue from him as we go. It looks like this is the end of the fight here, so let's just pull him up. Sadly, we just got Transfusion, which would allow us to resurrect with our Death Shroud, but uh, it's on it's robbed of us. Now, Magister, strike down the ghost. A little revenge for Siren. A little revenge for Siren. You're damn right I want some revenge for Siren. So here we go. Thaddeus Ghostwright, the Lich himself. He comes into the fight. I presumably doesn't have enough forces left anymore. This city is ours. We shall raise Zaitan's banner. Heard your name before. The Silvari screamed it just before she died. Oh my God! Wow. Well done, Magister. You channeled the idol's power without turning into a ravaging, blood-crazed psychopath. Ah, I may not have mentioned that particular side effect. Well, never mind. Wait, what? Good job. The idol is incredibly strong. Can we use it against the vanguard at Claw Island? Sadly, no. The human god of mass murder is not a deity that likes to use the same tactic twice. The idol's no longer enchanted. Not long ago, an associate of mine, Tegwin, was trapped in awe. Since her return, she's been training Silvari to fight the Orions. We could use their help. Hmm. It's also possible that my researchers have finished their most recent project. They were modifying a sonic weapon we captured from the dredge. Those both sound like good ideas. Manpower or firepower? Give me a moment to think before I decide. Whatever you decide, I'm going with you. You need the help, and I owe it to Siren. If you need to know something, I can help. But I'll leave the commanding to the expert. And Traherne, I guess you are certainly no expert in that area, but check it out, guys! Okay, cool, so there's so much to talk about here. First of all, yes, unfortunately, we use up the idol, and we can no longer gain benefit from its powers. That's a real goddamn shame, I must say. But, uh, we do hear about some other allies we can maybe pick up, and just in the nick of time, we, I mean, we heard the mail. Are you well? I know a pair of Silvari back in the Caledon Forest. 
Teguin and uh, Karis. They are skilled wardens and knowledgeable about the Risen. So, yeah. I mean, he even talked about them being trapped in awe, which we saw with the mirror. We, we were a part of this. Uh, can they hold their own in a fight, Trahan? As well as either of us. I like the thought here that we're asking that as, do you, do you think they're actually good enough to fend with this kind of ridiculous stuff we're now wading through? He says, as well as either of us, we should speak with them. They may be able to recruit more to our cause. I mean, the funny thing is, we saw a lot of Karis fighting, but not so much Tegwin. Um, so yeah, we could do that. Now, Gix also does have his own story. He says, two of our researchers are working on a weapon of mass destruction called the Sonic Harmoni Harmonizer. It could be extremely useful. Uh, based on harmonics? Interesting. It uses dredge technology. The Asura Ferro is a marvel with crystalline sonics. Baron's a char who specializes in massive electrostatics. So we could go for this as well. Uh, but I, I don't think Cara Flower would flinch for a second. She would go for Karis and Tegwin. She knows them. They're proven. What's kind of interesting and many players might not realize, but is who you pick here will actually mechanically affect the story steps to come. Our battle to reclaim Lion's Arch, Claw Island, and take the fight back to the Elder Dragon actually does mechanically change based on what we pick. If we go with Gix, we will get the benefits of the end of that mission. If we get pick Traherne, we'll get the benefits of that. So it really is what you want here. I'm going to choose two Silvari warriors to aid me in story to come. So, uh, yes, good idea, Traherne. Let's do it. And I suppose uh, he wants to do it as well because he's just seen a Silvari freaking die. So there you go. Uh, 500 uh, extra health. I'll pick up that axe there. And um, because it had 50 vitality on it. And what else does Traherne say? Uh, my friends, Tegwin and Karis will be of great help to the Priory. What do you think their skills are, Traherne? Well, they've served the Warden for the Grove. Both have traveled to Orr and lived to speak of it. What are they like? Well, they are close companions. Tegwin is elder and wiser. And Karis is... Is Karis. You'll see. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'm well aware. Talk to me. Uh, so Gick says, I must warn you, Lightbringer, that the researchers I'm sending you to meet are somewhat odd. What do you mean odd? Another blatant typo and mistake here, by the way. We just got called Lightbringer, despite the fact we are a magister of the Dermond Priory. Why there is Order of Whispers dialogue here, I have no idea. Because Gix isn't the leader of the Order of Whispers. Baron and Pharaoh have worked together for so long that they developed a form of shorthand. It's difficult to pass. How did that happen? Too long alone in the wilderness, mixed with little arcane grammatics, occlusion, and a whole lot of electroshock. I'll do my best. Well, we're not actually going to help them out, but uh, it seems Gix is so arrogant he's seems to think we're going to be going with his plan. Right. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, Lion's Arch for now with the early attack, thanks to an artifact from the Priory, has been well defended. So I'm pretty happy with that. But before we go to meet Karis and Tegwin, who have now been called on their wild hunt by the tree, uh, I do want to read this other mail. So it's something Kaith just very recently spoke to us about. And yes, as you guys might guess it, it's related to a dungeon. So, she was talking about the script, and she says, Valiant, I continue to be impressed with your progress. Word just reached the grove about your order's successful effort to recruit the script. Uh, where were the script at Claw Island? I guess they're still settling in. They've just gone through a tragedy. Uh, and if they had been at Claw Island, they would have died there, so maybe we should be happy with that. I've always been interested in the co uh, collective intelligence they display. If they are as cunning as I've heard, it will be good to have them with us against the dragons. It's a shame that their village was destroyed, but at this stage, I firmly believe lives are more important than property. I mean, the Silvari would believe that, right? When the dragons are defeated, we'll turn our attention to rebuilding, but first things are first. I'm also doing my part to marshal resistance to the dragons. I still intend to smooth things over between the members of Destiny's Edge and reforge us into the great fighting machine we once were. But it's a slow, difficult process that is complicated by the strong personalities, egos, and neuroses involved. I won't give up, though. And neither should you. May the pale tree guide you. So Kate said to that, that to us. And at the same time, our Herald. If you remember, the Herald is kind of the character in the background that informs us as Destiny's Edge moves around and does things. Uh, our Herald said this. Hail, mighty hero. The stories of your accomplishments have spread far and wide. I've heard from Kate, who's looking for help in the Twilight Arbor. A nest of Nightmare Court followers north of the grove. We've been just outside there, if you remember, when we were dealing with the Nightmare Court. 
He says, or she says, it's just my Herald. We don't know what gender this character is. They're, they're a mystery still to this day. My understanding is that she is going there because of another of the Silvari Firstborn, Foulane, has established herself as the Nightmare Court leader. And she feels it's her responsibility. So we did hear about this very early. We asked Kaith about Foulane. Caraflower knows that they have history, but not to what extent. And, uh, I mean, no Silvari seem to truly know what went on between them. We know that they traveled together for many years. Then they, they split it off. And here we hear that, um... Uh, and during the story, when we asked Kaith about it, she just said, Foulane is the Grand Duchess, the leader of the Nightmare Court. Okay, it seems Kaith isn't happy with that. She feels it's her responsibility. Kaith has always been a loner, first after losing Foulane to the court, and later with the breakup of Destiny's Edge. And I think she's trying to mobilize some new friends against her former oldest ally. As always, your Herald. So putting the two males together, what Kaith says and what people have told us, well, it seems she's going to Twilight Arbor, and she might just try and use that as an opportunity to re-galvanize Destiny's Edge. Well, I think we've waited long enough, guys. It's time to meet Kaith in there. That is the third dungeon of the game, the furthest point in the timeline. And of all the dungeons, this is kind of like the last of the original set, I would say, story-wise. You have the three dungeons that explain what all the members of Destiny's Edge do. And then things start to snowball quite wildly out of control in the later dungeons. So join me next time in the Twilight Arbor for conclusions to all kinds of storylines, including our friend Cadian. next time. I am at your service. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you shortly. We might turn our uh, helmet off here as well. Yeah. Yeah, we look pretty good now. Other races dream? I heard some of them dream every night. I wonder what they dream about. Each other, the future, the past? Themselves, mostly, I think. My senses have been reeling lately. I think I might be sick. We're surrounded by exotic sensations. Script, soundless, nightmare caught. I guess we're not in the grove anymore. The Sometimes when I meditate, too much. part of my dream returns to I me. Want to shut it all a dark off. part. I love feeling connected to everything. Oh my! What do you see? The call of the wild hunt brought me here. Shapes in the swamp. Will you help? Shadows. Coming for me. Probably just those slimy hylic. They scare me in daylight. Oh.